Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, today I want to talk about a very interesting topic. Uh, called the Sylvester Criterion. Uh, for uh positive definite matrices. Okay, so this uh this top I think this topic is like uh. I think this topic is maybe it at maybe in the first time that maybe. Uh, when you're in the like the first year in a in a college, right? You may learn how to you may learn these results. So basically, uh, so basically these results say that uh, if you have a right, you can give the matrices. Okay, so you can say somebody give you a matrices, and then you want to ask whether uh you want to ask right? So the natural question is that whether a is a positive semi definite. Those are positive definite. So uh, this in, in this video that I require positive definite. So this uh, has multiple definition, but the common definition is that x t a x is greater than zero uh, when x is a uh, non-zero vector. So uh, I require that now I require all a i j are real matrices, real element. Uh require that x is uh so let's say r a. Okay, so x is non-zero. So can, given a non-zero vector, that uh, this guy must be non-zero. And uh, the second definition is that uh, uh, all like a value, a value of x is equal to zero. Oh, sorry, all like a value of a is equal to zero. Okay, so uh, the so now the, there's a natural, uh, there's a natural question, so. So the natural question is the following. Uh natural question is the following. Uh how to how to determine A is positive definite. Right? So somebody handing you uh, right. So obvious ways that uh, by definition, right, you can do the uh diagonalization and find the uh, all eigenvalues. Okay, but this is probably so difficult, so uh cumbersome. Okay, so in a Sylvester criterion, there's a very weird results. Okay, very non-trivial results. So let me just tell you. And uh, I guess that everyone learned about it, but you may not like, understand this proof. Okay, so the theorem. So if A is uh, symmetric, if you add the condition that A is symmetric, so this means that uh, A is A the same as N transpose. Uh, now you can define, uh, you can define, I love, Okay, so you can define an object called the leading minors. Okay, or uh, I should say. Uh, okay, so let me just tell you. So A is a symmetric. Okay, so now I can define, I can com I can uh, compute the object called the, uh, called the determinant of the minor or the leading minors. So let me tell you, uh, there's a leading minors. Or basically, there is a, somebody says it's a leading principal minor. Principal minors. Okay. So what this means is that uh, given this n by matrices, right? Somebody give you a n by matrices. Okay. Then you can the first minor will be just a one, a one one. The second minor or the determinant of this minor will be determinant of the a11, a12, a21, a22. So basically it's this. Now I'm going to define as delta 3 to be this, determinant of this. And delta 4 will be determinant of this. And keep going. Okay. And the five delta n will just be determinant of n, a. Okay. So this is called the uh, uh, leading principle minors. This is like very hard to remember. Okay, so these guys are called leading principle of a minor. Uh, sometimes they are called also called determinant of leading. So usually, so leading principle minors are basically these sub matrices, and the determinant of leading principle min minors, I think there is a special name, maybe called special minor. But basically, you can calculate this delta one, delta two, up to delta eight. Okay. Okay, so fact. So this theorem is the says the following. So 
Uh, the first one is that if A is a uh, positive semi-definite, as a positive definite, and if and only if uh, delta 1 equal to 0, delta 2 equal to 0, up to delta 8 equal to 0. Okay, second, if A is a negative definite, then this implies that uh, delta 1 uh, greater than, uh, sorry, means that uh, delta 1 is less than zero, delta two greater than zero, delta three second less than zero, zero, delta four greater than zero. So they are alternating. And uh, yeah, so and uh, if uh, not, if a if one and two are wrong, uh, we don't know anything. Okay. So basically, basically say that if if you want to are wrong, or basically if all these these two conditions are wrong, then maybe A is still positive definite and A is still negative definite. Okay, so the weird thing is that uh, in order you don't need to calculate eigenvalue, right? You only need to compute this weird object, this weird uh weird determinant that this will uh, require that which will enough to tell you that where A is positive definite. Okay, so the rest of this video is to prove that uh, one and two are true. Okay, so the goal is to show one and two are true. Okay, I think uh, I guess every every like basically everything is clear. Okay. Okay, so basically our goal is to show if a is p positive definite, then all these uh all these minor are greater than zero. Okay, so the first one I, I will show is the following, basically it's one implies two. Okay, and the proof is trivial. Because uh, I just, if A is negative definite, then I can make minus A, right? This tells me that minus A is positive, semi, uh, positive definite. So then this means that uh, all the minor were alternating, right? Because the delta one of minus one A will be minus delta one A. And the delta two is a two by two matrices, so delta two is the same. Okay, so basically they're alternating. So if A is a negative definite, then minus A is positive definite. So it means that there are uh, these are all greater than zero. Okay, so it implies that delta one A is less than zero, delta two A is greater than zero, delta three A is less than zero. Keep going. Okay, so we prove that one implies two. Okay, so all these are trivial. So now all we need to prove is that when A is positive definite, then all these uh, are greater than zero. Uh, da, 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 da. So the proof idea. Oh, by the way, there are many kind of, uh, if you go online, there's a lot of proof that some of them using like Maybe like L L U factorization or probably I don't I don't I never use this. Okay. So the proof idea is that uh, using so I will use the mathematical induction. Oh, okay. okay, so if n is one, which is trivial. Alright, because now your a is some number a. One one right. So if positive semi def uh, positive definite implies that a one one is greater than zero, and if a one is greater than zero, then obviously that uh, a is positive definite. Okay, and I suppose zero is true or minus one. Okay, so now uh for let's say an a times n minus one n minus one. So basically you count. Basically you just it is a is n by eight right. And you say, oh, this guy is correct. So it's a minus one and minus one. Okay, so uh, first I claim that uh, so A at most. So I, I, I suppose that uh, all these theorems are greater than zero. I claim A at most have, uh, has one negative eigenvalue. One negative eigenvalue. Okay. And uh, the proof basically is the following. Uh, suppose not. 
So in the beginning, maybe we cannot prove that there's all the they're all eigenvalue are positive, but let's hope hopeful that we can prove at least one uh at most at at most as one uh, negative eigenvalue. So prove basic contradiction, suppose not, then uh then you can find maybe lambda one and lambda two, right? They are all, all uh they are all negative. Okay. And uh now uh you can so you can find a corresponding eigenvector. It's called eigenvector U and V. And uh things are symmetric, so they are also normal to each other. Okay. So that means that uh right, so this implies that U T A U is less than zero and the V T A V is less than zero. Okay, so U is a vector, basically it's a U1, U2 up to Un, and the V is also a vector, V1, V2 up to Vn. Now define W to be the Vn, so it's Vn U minus Un V. Right, so this is a vector, 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 but I take I take any component in the compute called W, okay? Okay, so now uh W is basically the vector. Uh the the n component of W is zero, right? Because if you take W n, then become V n U n minus U n V n, which is zero. Okay, so which implies that uh uh if I plug a w t a w, then basically I'm computing the w t right with a in minus one and n minus one w. Okay, because the n's component is zero. Okay, but but basically this is that u this is v n u minus v u n v. This is sorry, this is uh u and v a and then v and u minus u and v and transpose. Okay, so things there are also normal to each other, right? So uh we must get v n square. So it's V N squared, right? And a U T A U plus V U N squared V T A V. And this is less than zero, less than zero. So it's less than zero. Okay, but contradiction, right? Contradiction, because I assume that A N minus one up A N minus one is R. Uh, these are positive definite matrices. Contradiction with uh the the step, uh with with the step that I assume that. Uh, all of these uh, leading determinants are greater than zero. So the previous and minus one and minus one matrices are greater than zero. So contradiction. Okay. So now we only need to show, we only need to show what? We only need to show so even one negative eigenvalue is not possible. It's not possible. Then if this is true, then we prove our results. Okay. So proof is a uh, trivial, <laughs> right? Why? Because the determinant of a, right, basically the is the product of all eigenvalue. Then by comes right. So then by our results, that this guy must be greater than zero. Okay. So what? Okay. So must be greater than zero. But if you only have one eigenvalue which is negative, then this will lead to contradiction. This will lead to contradiction, right? Because that means that there are the previous n minus one are uh, there is n minus one which are positive, but there's one negative, right? So if there exactly if there is a one negative eigenvalue, then the determinant a will be less than zero. But this contradiction with my assume that the, the minor the nth minor are greater than zero. Okay, so which finish your proof? Okay. So I would like to uh, say something uh, very hard. Okay, so there is a hard result. So if you want to ask this Sylvester criterion for the uh, positive semi-definite matrices, then there is a weird result saying that uh, the if A is a positive semi-definite, then all the principal minor
uh, are non negative. So basically, if you require that a, you don't require the positive definite, but require positive semi definite, then you can prove that uh, you are you are any principal minor. So principal minor basically means that uh, uh, if you cut for five, then you must cut for five for column, right? You, you will get something like this, and then maybe you cut two three, then you will get another minor like this. So any column set and the, any the delete column and the delete rows, if they are the same set, there is called minor principal minors. And then you can prove that if A is positive same method, then, then all the principal minors are not negative. And this proof is, I think it's very non-trivial that uh, <clears throat> uh, you really need something which is, I think it's not so trivial that you can use mathematical induction to prove it. But for the positive same method, uh, positive definite, these Sylvester criteria are very easy to prove as I just presented in this video. See you guys in the next videos.